Broadcasting live from Detroit, Michigan, and all around the world, the church militant is Mike. Here's your host, Michael Morris. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Mike'd Up here from Church Militant. TV in the Archdiocese of Detroit. Hello, Archdiocese of Detroit, just in the city of Ferndale, which is just north of Detroit. Many of you actually who watch uh, have been to the studios and dropped by, and you're always welcome to come by and take a little tour and you know see what we've got going on here. Uh, this week, we have a couple of very interesting uh, uh, topics to cover. One is going to be this Common Core curriculum that is being pushed by the Obama administration in the nation's public schools, or perhaps a better way to say it would be the nation's government schools, government-run schools, because that's what they are. There's not really, uh, as our one of our guests is going to talk to us about, there's not really much public input at all. It's just government mandates and rules, and that's what it is. But a thing that's alarming about this Common Core curriculum is that the curriculum as it stands was actually put together by funding from Bill and Melinda Gates from the Gates Foundation. Now, they're all about, many of you know, they're all about population control and sex ed and all that. And a lot of very, very interesting uh, comments are coming out. People are concerned that this is just a way under the guise of trying to get something into public schools as far as streamlining and making more efficient coursework and curriculums like on uh, English and math and history and that sort of thing is what's just waiting in the wings, a great big huge push to standardize sex education across the board. Okay, that's in the government schools. What has many, many, many Catholics worried is that over half of the dioceses in the United States are also accepting this or working this into their curriculum as well. And a lot of Catholics are saying, hey, what's up here? What, what, what do we care about some kind of standardized uh, system of education for? Catholic schools are always leading the way. We don't need to adopt this, and particularly if the money and the funding and the idea is being pushed by Obama and backed by Bill and Melinda Gates. Big problem that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about that with Pot- Father Peter Stravinskis, a extraordinarily uh, smart, well, uh, well-informed, great guy, sort of leading the charge on this and expressing a lot of the concerns. Also, we're going to talk to the author of Cleansing Fire, this book by Peter Kelly. Peter Kelly will be joining us uh, right after the news break here. Uh, It is a very interesting look at, uh, motivated by the problems in the church. He writes this book, it's a novel, uh, about the problems in the church and why these things are so troubling and how we've gotten to where we are. It's about the crisis. And uh, you can bet here, when you tune in here to churchmilton.tv, you're going to hear about the crisis because it is worldwide, it's devastating, and if you saw our dispatches program from a couple of weeks ago, you can see just how incredible it has been and devastating, as we called the title of the show, The Demolition of the Faith. It is demolishing faith, this crisis, and we're going to be talking about that. So we'll have Peter Kelly with us coming up right after news and our little uh, our little break, and then pa- Father Peter Stravinsky. Vinskus talking to us about the Common Core curriculum. But first, let's turn to news, shall we? And now for our news roundup, the latest from the Catholic world, Cardinal Burke, Raymond Burke, walks out. Cardinal Raymond Burke got up and walked out of a speech recently in Rome given by Vatican watcher Sandro Magister. Magister began politely, but definitely criticizing Pope Francis for various statements and actions he has done recently. And that apparently was enough for Cardinal Burke. Vatican Archbishop Pozzo also left with Burke. It is precisely clear, it's not precisely clear that they left owing to Magister's speech, but it certainly appears so at this point. Following rejections from the, both the Vatican and Italian authorities to hold a funeral for former Nazi Eric Priebke, the SSPX stepped in and conducted the funeral mass for him just outside Rome's city center. After escaping to Argentina immediately following World War II, Priebke was eventually captured and brought to trial and found guilty of war crimes stemming from the notorious murder scene in caves just outside of Rome, the murders of over 300 Italian citizens. That was done in retaliation for uh, some uh, uh, partisans killing some German officers. He never publicly recanted Priebke or expressed any remorse whatsoever for his actions. He was the second in command under the Gestapo Commandant of Rome, Herbert Kapler, 
who was the major character in the movie The Scarlet and the Black, starring Christopher Plummer. And an Irish lawmaker is slammed for his abortion support. Irish lawmaker Derek Keating has been told by his parish priest he is no longer welcome to be an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion at the parish. Keating was one of the supporters of the much heated and contentious Irish abortion law, which just passed this summer and opens the door for abortions to be legal in almost all circumstances in the Emerald Isle. Keating claims he is being targeted by a small band of what he calls right-wing extremists within the church. His parish there in Ireland is reacting strongly to the passage of the new law. And joining us here in our Up to the Minute news segment, Michael Miller. How are you doing, Michael? Good. How about yourself? Very good. Very good. We have, uh, well, it's kind of a, like, are you kidding me sort of story. Is this just more of that sensationalism, sensationalism, tinfoil hat craziness going on and people accusing people of all kinds of things that really aren't true to make a point? Priests were told in the government shutdown, Catholic priests, they're not allowed to offer mass on on U.S. government facilities under threat of arrest if they did. Yep. Yep. That's that's the truth. Uh, 50 priests, and this is worldwide, not just on American soil, yeah. uh, have been told uh, you are not allowed because you were under contract as a chaplain uh, to the United States that you're not allowed to because this is not an essential service. <laughs> what? Well, first of all, what if you want to just volunteer your time because you just want to go into the office and work for free? Work right. for free. Right. Not allowed? They're threatening them with arrest? Uh, yeah, this is what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we know yeah. the Thomas More Law Center, which isn't just down the road from us here in Detroit, it's in Ann Arbor, uh, filed suit uh, on behalf of these priests, one in particular, uh, Father uh, Leonard, is that his name? For Father Ray Leonard, yes. Father Ray Leonard. And they were told, uh, they found out this morning, you know, the second a lawsuit hit their desk, they're like, oh, 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 just kidding, folks. <laughs> Nothing to see here. And fortunately, they reversed themselves. But g- give us a little background on this with Father Leonard and, and just in general. This is just all part of the government shutdown, right? That's right, yeah. Um the government, um, again, they, they determined that there was um, a few basic things that uh, services that should be staying open, like uh, child services and um, health clinics and stuff like that. But for some reason, they said that chaplains and Catholic chaplains were not an essential service. So um, This did not apply to Protestant chaplains, however, right? That is accurate. And actually, uh, Father Leonard had Protestant chaplains using the worship space that he uses where the Eucharist is held, mm-hmm. uh, and but he was not allowed to. Uh, mm-hmm. Go figure that one. Hmm. So um, now, Father, it's it's interesting to note Father Leonard was stationed in China for uh, I think a good decade, and when he came back to America, he thought, well, you know, this would never happen in America, kind of thing. And and lo and behold, <laughs> I mean, and here it is. Here it is. Uh, so it's it's a crazy thing that we're experiencing here, but um, it's happening. Well, essentially, I want to read a quote from the uh, Thomas More press release, uh, the Thomas More Law Center press release that came out. They're the group, a uh, wonderful group, uh, uh, former Oakland County prosecutor Dick Thompson, great guy, uh, and his staff there uh, are always looking for these kinds of things. So anyway, he issued a uh, uh, they issued a press release, and uh, so you find the quote here. He says that. Uh, Uh, Quote, the actions of the federal government were a blatant attack on religious liberty. I would never have imagined that our government would ever bar a Catholic priest from saying mass under the threat of arrest and prevent Catholics from participating in their religious exercises. Allowing the chapel doors to open and Father Leonard to fulfill his priestly responsibilities, which happened this morning, Mm -hmm. does not erase the constitutional violations that occurred. We don't want this to occur again the next time there's a government shutdown. Our lawsuit will continue. Yeah, they need to sort of make a put a stake in the ground here and say, you know, next time this happens, because you politicians can't get your act together, uh, you're not taking this out on us and our priests and our Catholic uh, servicemen. Do you think there's a, uh, well, just speculate, do you think there's any kind of um, uh, uh, troubling issue there with Catholic priests can't say Mass, but Protestant chaplains can do their thing? Absolutely. I mean, I don't know why it is that the Catholic priests or the, or the chaplains um, in these 
sounds like an ecumenical worship space. Yeah, it is. Um, I grew up on military bases, and uh, just so our audience, I used to go to mass and chapels on base practically my whole childhood. Yeah. And uh, you have, like, a room that, you know, and interestingly enough, in a couple of the chapels I went to, there's a great big curtain on a wall with a little space in between, and depending on which particular religious group, Protestant, Catholic, or Jewish, at least when I was a kid, those are the three, uh, you would just pull a pulley, and a cross would slide away behind the curtain, and a crucifix would come out, and then you'd pull the pulley again, and the crucifix would go away, and a Star of David would come out. Huh. And, uh, and the altar area, sanctuary area, if you want to call it that, was all kind of nondescript. It was, you know, cloth and velvet and a book to re- area to read a book and all that sort of stuff from. So, And this is what happens in the military. you got all different faith traditions and, you know, religions and all that, so they all have kind of a shared space like that. Uh, and, and that's the way it works on a military installation if there's a fixed place. So owing that, I don't know why Catholic priests couldn't go in there, but Protestant ministers could. It, it's bizarre. I, I, I can imagine, um, you know, Father Leonard standing outside watching a Protestant minister walk in to do his services. It was, what, what, what gives here? It's, yeah, it's like, it's just bizarre. Yeah, um, it's very strange. And of course, our Lord is is sitting there in the chapel. Um you know, we don't have access to it, so we don't know who's doing what. Uh, yeah, and that's curious, too. I, I, I don't know why why the Blessed Sacrament would be kept in reserve like that. We always had to uh, either it had to all be consumed. Again, when I'm a little boy on bases, it was quite a few years ago. But uh, it either all had to be consumed or the priest would take it uh, – uh, would take whatever was left after Mass and uh, take it somewhere. I don't know if you took it to a local parish or something like that. So that's strange that in the chapel here there's a, an ecumenical chapel shared by all these different religions that the Blessed Sacrament is left there. That strikes me as odd as well. Yeah. But, uh, all right, well, listen, Michael, well, I'm sure there will be more of this as the uh, Obama administration continues to rain down uh, all kinds of oddities involving the Catholic Church. So yeah. uh, I'm yeah. sure we'll have much more to talk about in the future. I'm afraid you're right, yeah. <laughs> all right, thanks. Michael Miller from churchmilton.tv News Roundup. We'll have probably Rebecca on next week because a lot of people sent us some emails and said Rebecca's better looking than you. Now, you can answer those emails. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to argue, yeah. trust me. <laughs> I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> All right, Michael Miller. When we come back, we're going to be talking with author Peter Kelly from Cleansing Fire, whose inspiration for this great, big, huge, wonderful novel was The Crisis in the Church. We'll be right back right after this. The Restoration Retreat, the second annual Retreat at Sea from churchmilitant.tv. We invite you to set sail with us this January the 12th for a seven-day retreat at sea to discuss the who, what, where, when, and why of what has gone wrong in the church for the past 50 years. The idea of a Catholic restoration is an immensely dense topic and will undoubtedly take a week's worth of conferences to truly understand. There are many questions circling the minds of faithful Catholics. Why have all my children left the faith? How have I become the crazy religious person in my family? What can I do to restore the faith? How can I get others involved? How did we get here and where are we going? All that and more will be on this year's Restoration Retreat from churchmilitant.tv. Retreatants will be afforded the opportunity for a true spiritual escape from emails, ringing phones, and noisy neighbors. All the rigors of the worldly life will be paused for a week of daily mass, confession, exposition, benediction, Eucharistic procession, and the Holy Rosary. All in addition to the daily conferences, terrific weather, and delicious meals with great Catholic conversation. Please click the link and we'll see you in January.